Hello everyone, this is Dr. Zaidi. Welcome to my YouTube channel ZTube. In this video, I'll be discussing special orders. So what is a special order? A special order is a one-time order. Usually customers or a new customer place a one-time order and they are willing to pay you below the market price, the price that you are charging in a regular market. So if you are selling your product for $100 in the market, in a special order, usually they will be willing to pay you $80, $75, $90 for the special order, below market price. Now the reason they are willing to pay you a less than the market price is because the special orders get a quantity discount. They are buying in a bulk quantity. It's a one-time large order. So instead of buying one unit, two units, 10 units, 100 units at a time, they may place 10,000 um, units or 50,000 units order right so that's a special order now your decision is should i accept a special order or not and if i decide to accept a special order what price should i charge to the company right so before you decide on the price that you're charging to uh, the company you should decide whether you accept the special order and that depends on the company's ability to produce that special order right? Do you have enough capacity to produce the order? Are you working on, on the idle capacity or excess capacity or you are uh, working in a full capacity situation? So if you are working in a full, full capacity, then you will have to give up your current sale in order to satisfy this one-time order. Do you want to do that, right? In what cases can you do that? Yes, maybe if you are trying to tap into a new market, let's say from North America, you wanna enter into an Asian market or a European market, maybe you sell it for, uh, you, maybe you can give up your customers you know, for one time special order just so you can grab more customers in the other market. Other than that, there should be no reason why you wanna give up your current customers to, um, uh, to, for this particular special order. So if you don't have uh, excess capacity, do not accept a special order. The other things that you consider is, okay, yes, you have an excess capacity and you can produce the additional order. Now, does that order provide you positive contribution margin? Contribution margin is what? Sales minus variable cost, right? Because fixed cost is fixed in a relevant range. So if you are within the relevant range and you are not going to incur any additional fixed cost, then only thing, will be affected is your contribution margin as long as your sales price is more than the variable cost that you will incur for this additional order you should be fine so if you have a positive contribution margin you can accept that special order right however sometimes even with the positive contribution margin you may incur additional costs for a special order for example you may have to pay you know, shipping costs, they say that, okay, you will, ha you will pay, the, the seller will pay the shipping cost, or they've asked you to obtain a, some sort of certification, you know, that suggests that you are producing a quality product, then that's an additional cost. So if there is an additional cost associated with the order, then you should also subtract that additional cost from a contribution margin and see if you still have a positive number. And if, if it is a positive number, you can accept the order. However, even with the positive contribution margin or the profit that provides, you need to consider some qualitative factor. Just relying solely on the quantitative factor may not um, be effective for the company. Like uh, if, for example, you have a positive contribution margin, you're gonna earn profit, you know, once you subtract additional costs and everything, you're still making money. But you need to consider that how is it going to impact your current customers? If your current customers find out that, oh, you are selling your product at lower price to the other party and you are charging them, you know, higher price and you have, you know, they have been your customer for a long time, then they may retaliate. They may come back and they may ask you, you know, for a new price or negotiate, or, you know, you may end up losing those customers. They may not even just come back and just go somewhere else. So you need to see that how this special order is going to affect your current customer line. And if it is going to affect your current customer line, then um, it may not be worth it to take that special order. 
right? So you need to consider that. And sometimes even the contribution margin is zero or contribution margin is negative means, you know, after you, know, you found out that your variable cost is like uh, $90 and, uh, you, uh, and your sales price is $80. So you're losing $10 on each order. In those cases, you know, uh, the quantitative uh, result says that you should reject this order. You may end up accepting this order if you want to tap into the brand new market and you were like, okay, you are going to handle the short term uh, losses, but in the long run, you, you will get a market share and you will make a lot more sales. So in that cases, yes, you know, you may take the order even if the contribution margin is negative. So you need to, you cannot just rely on the quantitative factors. You also have to uh, think about uh, the qualitative uh, impact on the company, right? So you go beyond the box. So let's start with the example. Here, Z Corporation manufactures and sells motorcycle helmets. Currently, the company is selling helmets at $110 each to the local dealers in the United States. Z's average yearly sales is 150,000 helmets. However, the company has excess capacity that can be utilized to produce additional 50,000 helmets. So the question clearly says that they have excess capacity, right? So they are running on idle capacity at this time. They can produce additional 50,000 units. So as long as the new company demands you produce less than 50,000 units, you're not going to incur any additional uh, fixed cost. Z Corporation has received a special order of 30,000 helmets at $80 each from a German dealer. So $80 each is below what the Z Corporation is selling their helmet for, they're selling for $110. However, the 30,000 capacity, the $30,000 special order is, uh, it still fits in the capacity because they can produce 50,000 additional helmets, okay? The German, the German dealer has made the order conditional on receiving European reliability certification. That would cost Z Corporation $100,000. In addition, Z would also incur the shipping cost of $5 per helmet. So whatever variable cost and other costs Z Corporation is incurring, in addition to that, Z will also incur $5 shipping cost plus $100,000 total certification cost if they accept this order. Now, is the order going to be profitable? Let's see that. Z's total cost per helmet is provided below, direct material 35, labor 15, overhead 20, and operating expenses 30. So if you add them together, 35 plus 15, 50 plus 20, 70 plus 30, 100. So their total cost looks like $100, right? Which is below the selling price in the North American market, which is $110. However, it's a lot higher than the $80 uh, price that the German dealer is willing to pay, okay? Now, if you look at closely, the manufacturing overhead is 50% variable. That means the other 50% is fixed. Fixed means the fixed is not going to be affected within a relevant range. And because they are producing only 150,000 and they have a capacity to produce 200,000, the fixed may not increase. Means half of the $20, $10 is fixed. That shouldn't be affected. Similarly, operating expenses, 20% are variable. 30% are fixed. So that means the remaining 80% are not going to be affected in $30 only the variable portion should is going to be affected. Should Z accept this special order? We'll do capacity check now. Because the current production is only 150,000 units and we have an excess capacity or idle capacity to produce 50,000 additional units, whereas the special order is only asking us to produce 30,000 units, we can easily produce those 30,000 units. We can currently produce up to 200,000 units, but, but due to idle capacity, we are only producing 150,000 units. So we have sufficient capacity. Second thing we need to keep in mind is that the manufacturing overhead cost that is provided is the total manufacturing overhead cost. And MOH has both fixed and variable portion. So we separate out the variable portion because fixed within a relevant range is not going to be affected as this is within the relevant range of 200,000 units. So 50% of $20 of MOH is variable, which is $10. Similarly, operating expenses, the variable portion is $30 times the 
and this will give you $6 variable operating expenses. The fixed operating expenses, it stays fixed within a relevant range and are not going to be affected. So let's move towards the solution now. So if you see here, a special order is at $80 per unit times 30,000 units. So this will give you 2.4 million of revenue. Your variable cost is $35 for direct material, $15 for direct labor, $10 for manufacturing, variable manufacturing overhead that you just calculated previously, and $6 for your variable operating expenses times $30,000. I'm sorry, 30,000 units. This will give you $1.98 million. Okay, you subtract that from 2.4 million, you will get $420,000 of contribution margin. Now, positive con contribution margin is sufficient if you don't have any additional cost. So if in this case you have additional cost, but if the question didn't provide you additional cost that Z would, would incur, then you would accept this order at this point. However, we have additional costs, both shipping and the certification costs. So we need to see that if uh, we still end up making money or not. So here the shipping cost is $5 each unit times 30,000 units, that's 150,000. And the European reliability certification amounted to $100,000, it's a one time. So you will, have, you will incur $250,000, which is a sum of 150 plus 100,000. $250,000 additional cost, which is still lower than the contribution margin of 420,000. So you will have a net benefit of $170,000. So it is beneficial for company to accept this order, right? Unless there are qualitative concerns due to which you do not wanna accept this order. For example, losing the current customer. Otherwise you should accept this order. In a differential format, um, this looks like this. You can either prepare in a traditional format that I showed you before or a differential. Differential is what if, if you accept the order and what if you don't accept the order. So if you don't accept the order, you know, your revenue is zero. If you don't accept the order, your differential, co your uh, cost is zero, right? Then if you accept the order, which is 30,000 units, so your 30,000 times 80 is 2.4 million. So your differential revenue goes up from zero to 2.4 million. So that's the difference in revenue. Zero for not accepting, then 2.4 million for accepting the order. Differential cost, so you have per unit cost for material 35, 15 for labor, 10 for variable MOH, it's just the variable portion. Variable operating expense is $6, and then the shipping cost is also variable. So we put it here as additional uh, variable cost. Uh, so we have $71 of total variable cost per unit times the 30,000 units, which will give us 2.13 million in differential cost, differential variable cost. So 2.13 million is the differential variable cost. If you don't accept this order, you have a zero cost. If you accept the order, you have 2.13 million of differential variable cost. So that's why it is a differential cost. Then you have a European certification cost if you accept this order, you have to get the certification for $100,000. If you don't get, it's zero. If you get it, it's 100. So your total differential cost is 2.23 million, which is sum of 100,000 plus 2.13 million for total variable uh, cost. So 2.23 million is your total differential cost, which is the difference between not accepting the order zero to accepting the order 2.23 million. Now you subtract the to total differential cost 2.23 million from your total revenue or total differential revenue 2.4 million, you will get 170,000 in differential income. So that completes this question. And thank you for watching my video. Please subscribe my channel for live updates.